Hello, everybody. Welcome to Interpreting Remainders in Division. So now that we've learned a little bit about division, we get those little things, those little leftovers called remainders. And up until this point, we've just been putting them down as remainders. 25 remainder 2, 37 remainder 1. We just put the little number down and we just kind of forget about them. Now we got to think, what does that mean? So we're going to put you in some word problem situations and we're going to decide what is that remainder and what does it mean? So this first example I give you here, three students share 13 sticks of gum. How many sticks of gum does each student get if they receive equal shares? Because really that's all we're doing with division. I've got 13 sticks of gum and I'm going to divide that into groups for my three students to try and make sure everybody's getting a fair amount. That's what we're doing in division. So let's take a look at the problem I have set up for you. So I just cho chose three people that I've had as students before. So I've got Michael, he was a smiley guy. Peyton had really big hair. And here's Chloe with her glasses. And here's our 13 pieces of gum. So what I'm gonna do is give everybody a fair amount. You get one, you get one, you get one. And you get one, and you get one, and you get one. And you get one, and you get one, and you get one. And you get one, and you get one, and you get one. And now we're stuck, because remember we talked about division means everybody gets a fair amount, and we've got one piece left. So then this is where we talk and we go, okay, this is our leftover. This is our remainder, okay? And we talk about what do we do with this one piece? We give it to Michael. No, because then we don't have a fair amount. Um, we throw it in the garbage. Well, you got a piece of gum. Do you have to throw it in the garbage? Well, what if we chopped it into pieces? What if I took my pen here and I gave Michael a piece and I gave Peyton a piece and then Chloe gets a piece? That means that everybody's going to get four pieces and this piece is, it's cut into three, so four and one third. Peyton would get four and her third and Chloe would get four and one third. And if we look at that like a division problem, it looks something like this. So what we did was we did the division 13 divided by three. We had a remainder of one, but what we do when we're gonna be sharing, especially when we're sharing food, put your remainder on top and then take your divisor, that's what we call the number we're dividing by, how many people were there, and put that on the bottom. That's where we get our fraction. So each kid is going to get four and one third. So this is one situation, but this is only one of three different situations. So usually with food, what do we do? We call this turning it into a fraction, okay? Because we're going to split things up and we're going to share it among the people. But we've got some other situations here. So that first situation I just showed you, we already did it. And this is turning it into a fraction. 45 remainder three, we put the remainder on top. That's your numerator in the fraction and your divisor goes on the bottom. That would be 45 and three fourths if we're sharing some type of food. We're gonna look at some other situations. You could also ignore or drop it. So let's say you got that same answer. You got 45 remainder three. There are gonna be some word problems where we just ignore and we get rid of the remainder three. We just call our answer 45. There's gonna be other situations where we round it up we have 45 remainder three. Instead of 45 remainder three, we round up to the next biggest number and we call that 46. So let's look at two of these situations here. So you've already got the one dealing with food. Food is usually we're chopping it up into fractions. This is not food. Here we go. Three children wish to divide 16 toy cars equally. What does each child share? So picture, you know, your little kids and there's three kids playing and they've got these 16 little cars they're playing with. And they're whining and I want a car, I want a car, I want a car. And you got to jump in there and say, okay, everybody's going to get a fair amount of cars. Well, you guys already are looking at this, probably thinking with your division minds, okay, I'm doing three times something to get close to 16. Well, that would be five. I'm going to have a leftover car. And that's what I'm going to end up with right there. Every kid is going to get five cars and there's going to be one car left over. Now we've got a problem because you know how little kids are. They don't want to share. And if I got one leftover car, I want it. No, I want it. No, I want it. What do I do? Well, let's think about that first situation. Divide it into a fraction. 
are you really going to do that? Are you going to take out a hammer and a knife or something and chop a toy car up into pieces and say, here, you get the steering wheel and you get some tires and here, you get a door. No, you wouldn't do that. Okay. So what you're probably going to do is the next situation. This is where mom or dad comes in and they are going to drop the remainder. Some remainders are just dropped or ignored. So every kid in this situation, the drop or ignored situation, is going to get five cars. What's going to happen with the leftover car? You know what's going to happen with the leftover car? Mom or dad's going to take that thing and put it in their pocket and say, everybody's getting five and I get to play with the last one and I'm going to walk away so everybody has a fair amount of cars. So this is a situation where we drop the remainder or we ignore it. We just pretend it's not there. If you want to, you look at a situation like that and you go, okay, Mr. Remainder, you don't exist anymore. Mom's put the car in her pocket. But we have one last situation. This situation. So Liam's got 29 photographs. Liam likes taking pictures and making photo albums. He can fit six photos on each page of his photo album. So now I'm picturing in my mind this photo album one, two, three, four, five, six. You can put six pictures on each page. I want to know how many pages must he use to hold all 29 photos. I want him to hold all of them, okay? So in this situation, let's look at the problem we're going to set up here. Well, we know it's 29 divided by six. Let's see how it works itself out, though. So 29 divided by six means, okay, I'm doing groups of six pictures. I'm going to end up with four pages, they're going, to, they're going to be full. I'm going to have four full pages of pictures. But that means that I have five pictures left over. I have five just still laying on my table. But up here on the problem, I says, I can fit six photos on each page. So what am I going to do with these five leftover pictures? Well, let's think about our situation before. Uh, fraction. I'm going to take the pictures and cut them into little slices. That does not make any sense whatsoever. Why would you cut the pictures into little slices? Okay, well, let's go to the next situation. Um, I'm just going to uh, drop them and throw them in the garbage, pretend they don't exist. You're gonna throw away five of your memories, five of your glorious memories of your childhood? No, why would you do that? This would be a situation where you're going to round it up. So what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna make an extra page. And on this page, I'm only going to have five pictures. Well, what are we going to do with this blank spot? Who cares? Maybe next week I'll take another picture and I'll fill in that blank spot. I'm not throwing away any pictures. So instead of four remainder five for this situation, what are you going to say for your final answer? You're going to say how many pages does he need to hold all of the photos? Notice that situation says all of the photos. It doesn't say it has to be equal. It says all 29 photos, none of them are being thrown in the garbage, none of them are being chopped up, I wanna hold all of them. So I'm gonna have four full pages and one page that only has five, that's fine with me. I am going to have five pages. So those are your three situations when you're interpreting a remainder. And I'm gonna look at them one more time just so we can go over them. You have the one situation, where you turn it into a fraction, your remainder is your numerator, your divisor is your denominator, and that is usually for food. We're usually chopping food into pieces, ignoring it or dropping it. If I wanna share equal amounts with everybody, like in a classroom, if I'm handing out equal pencils or candy, if I have leftover candy or pencils or something, I'll just keep those behind my desk. Everybody gets a fair amount. I'm gonna round it up when I wanna make sure that everything gets included. So in that example with the photographs, I don't wanna throw away the photographs. If I'm um, serving food on plates at a fancy, uh, fancy dinner or something like that, I'm not gonna put five treats on every plate and then I've got two left over, what do I do with them? I throw them on the ground for somebody. No, no, I just get an extra plate for those. So these are your three situations about what to do with remainders, okay?